Hi guys, welcome to United by Trucks. This is a video where you're gonna see a couple of different points in time where we're working on our 88 OBS. And essentially what this video is about is really helping convey to you what the best wheel and tire uh, width and backspacing is for a truck that's this low or somewhere roughly around this low, about that five, seven drop. This is probably five and a half, eight, maybe a little bit more. If you want to know all about the suspension on this truck, please take a look at the video down in the description. That'll give you all you need to know about the suspension on this truck. But we're going to hear from some folks who really have a lot of experience with OBSs in this video. So not just me. You're going to see a little bit of my journey and trying to get the basically the wrong backspace 10 inch wide wheel to fit in the rear. And you're going to hear from some folks who have a lot of experience with these trucks about what they know works best. So you're going to kind of see this progression uh, in this video and um, hopefully we'll make some real progress by the end. So let's jump in. I know I told you to go look at the prior video to really know about the suspension and see it installed on this truck, but I'll go ahead and tell you now. In the front, it's stock control arms with the QA1 replacement coilover shock and coil that slides up in the in the stock control arms. We've got stock brakes back up front and a React drop spindle that keeps the track width the same as factory and doesn't push the wheel out like other OBS Chevy spindles do. And then in the rear, we've got the full React suspension four link coilover setup. And you can see that reflection of this heater because man, it's cold here in Georgia. So we got this little heater going on in the shop, but um, rear four link from React suspension, QA1 coilovers, still on stock brakes in the rear that'll all change eventually. But the wheel and tire setup is, this is a 20 by 10 with five and a half inches of backspace. And that's a 19 by nine with six inches of backspace. So we feel pretty confident about where we are in the front, but this half inch of backspace in the rear is what's giving us our issues. So like I said, you're going to be hearing from others in the uh, in the video about what they prefer, but I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of a, of a teaser that a 20 by 10 on a stock OBS axle at this height with a, you know, 285, 35 or a 295, 40, 20 really needs six inches of backspace. So I'm a half inch backspace per wheel off. And obviously I'm having some fitment issues. This is a 285-35 we've already switched to. I actually started with a 295-40, which is about an inch and a half taller and just a little bit wider. And you can already see that where we've just moved the truck a bit, the inner fender liner here is still rubbing. And even though we've started to roll them, it's not enough. So today, after you see a struggle <laughs> with this truck, my buddy Patrick from Mr. G's Classic Trucks, he came into town. We started the process of fender rolling these, but my son and I, Jackson, say what's up. How's it going? We're gonna um, actually jump in here, pull these rear wheels off and try to make this better. So while we're getting these wheels off, let's flash back to when Patrick was here, give you an idea of what, what the struggles can be if you don't have the right backspace or aren't ready to go pretty aggressive on your rear end setup for your OBS. So like I said, in this video, we're talking about good suspension, the right suspension for these trucks and the right wheel and tire setup, or you'll end up in a mess like I'm in. Doing a little fender rolling on the OBS. So we're going to show you how we're doing it. Uh, I've actually never done this before. Patrick's done this quite a bit. Um, but uh, we're gonna show you what tools we're using, how we're getting this done. But uh, welcome to United by Trucks. This is Fender Rolling 101. Hi right, guys, so this is what we're working on. We've already got it jacked up, obviously, been working up front, but we've got 19 by nines with a six inch backspace up front, 20 by tens with a five and a half inch backspace in the rear. And that's why we're rolling our fenders because on these OBS trucks, to really get the right, what I think is the right wheel and tire package that looks correct, you gotta roll these fenders. And when we say roll fenders, we're talking about this area right here on the inside where the tire can come in contact. So we're taking this piece of trim off, which we've already done up front. And we're starting to softly roll this with a mallet. And then we'll take the fender roller up here and get it all the way uh, where we want it. So let me show you what tools we're using. That is a classic performance fender roller. We're having to use a, uh, a, a lug adapter from five and five on five to five on four and a half. Impact mallet drill to get the trim on and off. And then we got a heat gun. 
So we're just kind of doing this a bit impromptu on a Saturday afternoon. Come to town and Robbie puts you to work. <laughs> what we've done is kind of heated up this, uh, the underside, the actual part we're gonna be rolling, heated it up with a, with a heat gun. So you need a mallet, a heat gun, fender roller. And uh, we're just kind of knocking it in at first with the mallet and then fine tuning it with a fender roller. This is Patty Pat. Pat, tell him what's up. What up? He working too hard. So you can see we've taken it from sort of this angle into that angle. If you guys don't know Patrick, ATX C10, Mr. G's classic trucks. Dude loves a clean OBS. He ain't working on one today though. He working on a dirty OBS. Look at all this dirt we got down on the floor from banging on this truck. Slowly but surely. Shoot, that's doing a trick right there. So Eastwood makes one of these fender rollers. Um, I ended up buying this one from Summit just to make life a little easier. I could get it quicker. It's working pretty good. Since it's since the it's, head it is not telescope, it doesn't, it doesn't telescope. So it's like that's where I'm trying to find that happy medium. So we got this uh, new trim, fender wheel trim from AMD. So I'm gonna loosely put it in place and we're gonna mark where we wanna roll the actual trim. Normally when we do this at my place, we'll, instead of rolling the trim, we'll put it on here, we'll use some blue tape and we'll take a little Dremel and, cut and it. make it right to the edge so you can't see it. And then we'll just put a little slight roll on it. It all depends on how aggressive your wheel wheel and tire fitment is. If you're going super aggressive, you're going to have to roll it up as much as you can. But we never run this middle one, so we normally always delete this one. We'll make a little cut here all the way across and follow that contour line, and that way we're good to go. Sweet. And this truck's going to get all new trim, all sorts of stuff done to it, but we're just trying to get it to run up and down the road right now. And, uh, yeah, fender rolling it is. We got the wheel back on. Obviously we need to get the front end aligned, but there's a pretty good amount of room in there. I mean, that's my hand, even when I just tried to turn it. So it's basically rolled starting from right there all the way to about right there. So I think we're gonna have plenty of room up front. I'm about to tackle this back one and uh, see how that ends up. So I'm gonna give Pat his, uh, his due here. Part of our issue was the bed was not aligned very well because we just threw it on, ratcheted it down on the lift. So we've actually loosened the bed up, slid it over. It's still not perfect. We still got a, a bit of a offset, but it's way better than it was. And these are sort of junk tires on these wheels. They just, I bought them on the wheels and thought I'd run them until I got ready to get some new tires. But this is the rear passenger tire. And you can see it was just man catching on that fender. So I've only driven it maybe a mile down the road and back. So it's part of the I reason. I can't believe you made it that far. Pulling in this thing. Jackson's first time in it. Woo, and he's in alignment. A little more fender roll. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't that great. Smell like rubber, didn't it, bud? Yeah. We don't have the new trim on this side yet, but it's had a bit of a slight roll up in there. So now that the bed's been sort of shifted over, we think that'll make it better. All right, so Pat's under here messing around. What are you doing, Pat? Well, first and foremost, you got a leak. Uh, Yeah, check out the diff leak we got. Check this out. You want to go lower, right? I do. Okay. We're going to send it all the way. We don't need no spanner wrench. No, send it, baby. When we go down, though, we're going to have to go nice and slow. That's fine with me. Well, now that we're rolling the fenders, I feel a little more confident in doing that. And whatever, we'll be fine. I think so. This is a truck for fun, man. Let's have some fun with it. Hopefully, you do another burnout when we're done. Let's do it. Like I said, probably earlier in this video, Yes, we're building this truck for performance, but I like to start at the bottom 
and then come up. I want the truck to be as low as possible and then get it to where. I am gonna need a spin wrench boost. Dang it. <laughs> I don't right. have, we don't have one. They didn't send you a spin. Mm-mm. Grab me a flathead and a rubber mount. Okay, I'll be back. So we're on our last one. We basically learned that in the back, I had to run a little bit smaller tire with the back spacing that I have. I think the front's gonna turn out fine. Pat's been doing a killer job on it. Help me make sure we got this sorted. Yeah. Kind of just doing quarter turns. Back in the shop real quick. I'm gonna pull off the uh, wheels and tires with the 295-40 and take them over to Noah's. And I've got some 285-35s that Patrick sent over uh, that he had just sitting around the shop. So um, we're gonna try those on, see how those fit on the rear, even with the fenders rolled. So gonna pull these off real quick, run over to Noah's, get them mounted and come back and throw them on. We'll see. Say goodbye to the 295-40. Can't have a shot without Sweet Patina's TKO wipes. I know we talked about them before. And then you get a little tire dust on your hands. They got a little pumice embedded in there. Really get your hands all cleaned up. Man, do they smell good. Woo, all clean. Love these things. You can use code UBT5 over at Sweet Patina's website. Get you a discount on all sweet potato products. All right, guys, so we got the 285 35s in here. Noah, the you UBT tire it. man over you here, getting the 295 40s off. We're going to put the 285 35s on, get it back to the shop, and uh, show you what these look like with, you know, a little less meat. All right, guys, so we're back with 285-35. Gonna try this on here and see how it works. Actually, already got the other one on, but and it's still hitting a little bit, but the bed obviously is off. The truck's all off balance here, so I'm gonna try to get this one on real quick, let it on down on all fours and see where we are. This tire should be about an inch and a half shorter. So still got some decent sidewall. Oh yeah, still on it. Hi, right, this is Travis with Pro Performance. Uh, Robbie reached out to me to give a little insight and information on OBS wheel and tire fitness. So in general, kind of give you some info, the trucks are very similar. There's not a ton of variables in the OBS trucks, but enough to kind of make a difference when you start looking at wheels, especially in a one piece wheel. So we'll kind of start with general fitments. Generally, you're looking at an eight to eight and a half inch wheel up front. We'll do a 10 to 10 and a half uh, inch wheel in the back. That's a great fit for a 4.6 drop, 5.7 um, drop, 2.4 drop, all of that. If you're looking at a 10 inch wheel or 10 and a half, generally we will fit the same tire that we put on a 10 and a half in a 10. You're still working with the same width wheel tub no matter what. And a lot of the times if you say you have a 10 inch wheel and you go to a 10 and a half, that inside, that extra width is on the inside of the um, on the inside of the truck so you're not really gaining much if you're maximizing your wheel lip out to the front so it's not like a ten and a half wheel has more wheel lip than a 10 and generally you're going to put the same size tire on a ten and a half than you would on a 10 and we think it looks better because you kind of get a little more tire bulge that's where we kind of fall in those ranges now moving outside of that sure you can mini tub you can narrow rear end but we're just kind of generally speaking about a stock truck lowered um, on the front, eight or eight and a half, just depends if you go 18s, 20s, um, you'll find that's an 18.8 or 20 by eight and a half is common. Same thing applies. Um, you know, the tires, we run about a 245 tire on there. When you get into the front and a one piece wheel, that's where you generally get into 
stuff not fitting as well as it should. And that's partially why we developed the React Spindle. That keeps your track width uh, factory, so it does not kick it out like other, mar uh, other spindles on the market. Keeps them nice and even with the fender. Um, it still is a tight fit. We always recommend rolling fender wells. Um, that's gonna be on the front or the rear. So on the front, generally we'll run stock arms with a React spindle. Now, if you wanna run a little lower or you're on bags, then I would look at a stone fab arm kit. That'll pull it in inch and a half per side. That tucks the wheels in quite a bit. Now we have done four, six, five, seven drops on stock arms with React spindles. They work great. They are close to the fender. But again, we always recommend rolling. Move to the stone fab if you are extra low, bagged, anything like that. Um, really, you can't get over a five inch drop on these trucks, anything past that. I think you just run out of travel, it starts to ride a little harsher. So I usually stop around the five inch mark, maybe five and a half, somewhere around there. I'm a 20 guy, I like 20s. I think they're a great fit on the OBS trucks. I either will recommend to customers if they want a small wheel, do an 18 inch wheel, eights and tens. Um, if they're going to do 20s, 28 and a half and 20 tens. Moving into 22, some of the battles that you find are the overall tire height. They'll physically fit, but remember that you go to a 22, you're dealing with an overall tire height wheel and tire combo that is taller. What that's going to do is it's going to actually raise up your truck. Let's say for example, your 20 inch tall tire is measuring about 28 inches. You go to a 22, that's going to measure 29. So you're gonna fight two things. Your, your truck's gonna be a half inch higher versus if you had a 20 on it. And then you're gonna actually watch the fender well height to the top of the tire. Although they may fit and clear and turn and everything in there, you're gonna to wanna to watch the overall height because it can scrub on a hard bump. That's when you get into slush tubs or something that has higher height there, that'll get you that extra room. Really personal preface, that's why I'm a 20s guy. 28 and a half, 2010s, we run a 245 and a 275. That fits great. But again, as a, as a great fit overall, 18 eighths, 18 tenths, 28 and a halfs, 20 tenths. Obviously we can help you with fitment, that's what we do. We've owned a lot of OBSs, deal with them a lot. So anytime you have questions, you can always call us. We'll kind of guide you down that path and make sure you get a wheel and tire combo that works with your drop height and everything. So hope this information helps. Robbie's truck is coming out great. We like the setup, like the look, and look forward to more. OBS trucks are different than C10s. I'm definitely finding that out, but why it's so important to get this back spacing right in the rear and well in the front too, but I'm obviously having trouble. I'm having trouble with fitment because I bought used wheels off of Facebook marketplace. I'm having to spend some extra time and probably gonna have to spend some extra money to get these fixed uh, where they will actually fit. So I do love these wheels. I'm going to run them. I love them. They look killer on the truck. I'm going to make them fit, but because I took a chance, ordered some on marketplace, my options to make these fit, is narrowing the rear end, maybe even having a little bit of uh, maybe a quarter of an inch, half an inch milled off the mounting surface of the wheel on the inside. I think there's plenty to do that. Or I could cut and tap flat the inner fender lip on the rear. So I may end up trying that first, but God, I just love the stance and how this thing's looking. Back in the shop and uh, I actually have already recorded some of this and have decided to do it over. I worked on the passenger side of the uh, fender lip, got it cut and I'm a little, I'm not unhappy with the cut. Uh, I'm, I, I just learned a lot from what I did over there. I was using a Dremel 3000, which this rotary tool actually worked out fine, but I think there's probably something better that I could be using. And so I went and got this M12 uh, straight die cut grinder. So I'm gonna use it on the driver's side. And I don't have as much to cut on the driver's side, but one thing I learned on the passenger side, and I'll show you here in just a minute, is that I didn't cut up maybe far enough on the bed side. Definitely a lot tighter on this side for some reason. I'm gonna get this all sorted out the best I can. Try not to cut through the bedside. I've got a lot of the fender lip out of the way. So what you're seeing right here is actually, you know, you can see the outer edge there, but that reflection up in there is actually the inside of this, this bedside. And I just want you guys to know, like, that's not flimsy or anything. I may actually even need to trim it a bit more to get it, um, but I can almost get my fingertip all the way up in there now, which is good. But like I said, what you're seeing up in there is actually the inside wall that comes down and joins uh, here with this lip to make two lips. 
um, which is why this is such a pain in the tail to deal with. I'm about to, like I said, tackle this driver's side and hopefully I've learned a little bit more. I may have to cut up just a little bit higher in the bedside. I feel like the cut on the actual lip itself is pretty good. And like I said, this one just isn't as bad as the passenger side. So I'm gonna jump in here, get this wheel and tire off and uh, get in here and get to cutting, show you what I'm working with. What's up guys, this is Patrick with Mr. G's Classic Trucks. Commonly asked question on the 88 to 98 is, what fits, what sizes, what tires, what backspacing, how wide can you go in the front and the rear? So we're gonna talk about that today. This truck here is currently sitting on a set of 20 inch wheels. They're 28 and a half in the front and 20 by 10 in the back. Now we do a ton of these trucks and what we have found to work absolutely the best is a 28 and a half in the front, either with a 245 40 20, if you want a little bit of a taller and a meatier tire up front, or a 255 35 20, if you want super low profile and not having any issues rubbing. Now, we do recommend on all of these trucks is to roll the fenders, even with that five and a half inch backspace up front. We still like to roll the fender a little bit. That way you're not gonna have any rubbing problems if you're trying to be as low as possible. In the back, this is a 20 by 10 with a six inch backspace. The most we have ever gone is six and a quarter, and that's if you wanna get the widest tire possible. We normally recommend, which you will not have any issues with, if you run a 10 inch wide wheel with a six inch backspace is a 285, 3520. This customer wanted the biggest, meatiest tire he could put back here with that six inch back spacing. So this is a 295 4020, which is gonna be wider and taller. Now, on these rear fenders, they are rolled as much as they can be. We even take the trim pieces off and trim the trim pieces on the inside. That way they will not catch the tire in body roll situations going up a driveway or anything like that. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me, but this is our go-to setup on the 88 to 98 trucks. So I'm under the driver's side and you can see where we began to roll this fender and it did pretty good. You can already see where I've marked about where I want the cut to be. Did that with the tire on. But what I learned on the other side is when I cut along this lip here, I'm actually cutting behind this, this top lip right here. So I'm cutting in behind where this wall comes down and meets this other lip. So what I think I'm gonna do this time is make some cuts right through here and then go ahead and swing it up high, which is what I did on the other side. But I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and do this side with that in mind. Hopefully this M12 will get me where I need to go, but that's what we're after. I'm still, my tire is still sitting. In fact, you can see it right there. It's still sitting on this lip. And uh, yeah, these are the kinds of things you got to deal with when you have the wrong backspace. Now I'm gonna put the tire back on here because I actually cut this one a little a little more shallow than the other side, and so the lip didn't separate. But on the other side, it's obviously a lot worse. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. But I'm gonna throw the tire on on this side, see how this looks. And obviously, I'll have to come and file some of this back at some point. But uh, this should be good enough, hopefully, to get us to alignment. One, not even a mile away. Let's see. One thing's for certain, that freaking M12 did the trick for my needs. I now know what I'm gonna be using to uh, 
do these kind of cuts. A little more precise. Tight cuts and 12 straight die. Also, this does have the XC 6.0 6 amp battery that uh, definitely makes this possible and on the highest setting. And again, there's a clean lip trim. You can see uh, from this clip I'm dropping in right now that the other side did not go this smoothly. The other part I'm worried about because I'm so low is I'm, if I'm gonna be too far up in the, up in the side of the inner bed wall. So if I am, I'll have to take some of that out. I think I may, may be able to do it over here. Passenger side, it's gonna have to be cut more. Get the jack stand out of the way. Let this truck down and see where we are. Well, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it rub, but I gotta tell you, I got these QA1 coilovers all the way down. So it's pretty slammed in the rear pretty slammed up front too, but I'm trying to get this thing to fit, these wheels to fit and ride super low. So I would say that this kit is probably, since I've got it bottomed out, it's definitely five and a half, eight range, maybe more. But uh, yeah, so let's go check out this fender lip. Okay. Oh yeah. We got the room in there now, it seems. I mean, room meaning like I can get the end of my pinky finger up in there. I'm at the end of my index finger. I'm gonna have to trim it back a little right there. That's pretty tight. But we're getting there and I got the right tools and I'm actually not making a mess of it. So chalk that up. I just need to trim that little section back, probably right, right at that spot weld. It's like a file sander, come back and really get that going before I go on a road trip. But like I said, just trying to get this thing to alignment, to get a pinion seal and uh, start messing with the cooling system. Make sure this thing's gonna get me where I need to so, go. So now we're a little more nice and rounded there. I know it's kind of a weird spot to just show y'all how I've cut that, but for now, that's what we're going with. Back on the passenger side, and this is all that I cut with a Dremel. And you could tell that because I got so narrow right here, I started to slide under the lip of the bed wall that comes down and meets like I said, to form this two lip bond here. And this is where people, you know, start to get nervous about warping the bedside and all that. I've been super careful just to make sure I'm not cutting into it and that sort of thing. But what I do need to do is you can see how I've got this lip cut back and this lip's still sticking out. And when I had the 29540 on here, you can see where it even rubbed up in here. So, the other side is not doing that with the 28535. However, and, and this one is not getting the, up this high, but I think I need to uh, sort of relief cut this a bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do now and then move on. One thing I wanna do is kind of trim a little bit of that lip off just a little more, not all of this, but just back here. So let me try that first. Definitely got a lot more of what we were looking for there. So I just opened that up more. I have no crazy marks out here, anything. Yeah, that's all scarred up under there from the Dremel. But as I said, this is my tool. This is what you should use. I should. I would say it's quick and precise. This is what I would suggest for trimming your inner fender lip. All right, let me throw this wheel back on. We'll check it out. That's the cool over. Lots of room there. Let's see if I can see, see light through here all the way. I think I can. Oh yeah. That 
definitely think I cut that back far enough. All right, I mean, we're still tight, but I think I'm still, I'm good to go to the dang alignment. So let's crank her up and pull her forward and see. Go check out this diff spot I got under here where that pinion seal is leaking. That's something. Might help out. Hopefully she'll fire up. Y'all let me know if you hear any squeaking or tire rubbing. I threw some sparks on the phone and I'm sure it messed up the camera here, but jumping into the OBS, taking it over to uh, get the front end aligned. I think, uh, I think we're gonna be good, at least good enough to get over there for now. Um, putting this little note in there. So it's please align the front end, replace pinion seal, change the oil, do a couple things that I just don't have time to do because I'm about to be going out of town. And uh, put note, the truck has no park. Use the chalk in the seat. Trans takes a minute to warm up to move and radiator has a hole in it, so. They're gonna love me. All right, guys, so I made it a big milestone for me. Pretty pumped to uh, have the truck here to get the front end line after all this stuff with the rear. So catch up back with you at the shop here in a minute. Even though it's a big nasty spot in the floor and everything's all dirty, makes me feel real good to know that truck is gone to get alignment. I did notice it had a bit of a little bit of rub still actually on the driver's side, which was not even the bad side, but a little bit of rub still on the driver's side. So when I get it back, from getting it aligned and all that, I will uh, try to take care of some of that. I'm really happy that I actually kind of worked my way through this. It took me some time. This is this video has really been over weeks. I'm a pretty busy guy and uh, running all over the place, doing all sorts of things. So um, I just got a couple hours here and there to deal with this. So that's what uh, that's what I did. I hope you guys have realized throughout this video the importance of making sure you get your wheel and tire size and back spacing and drop and all that right i know one thing i didn't we didn't talk as much about was suspension drops but my truck obviously has a very deep static drop coilover drop and um that's what was making a lot of my issues even harder uh with that five and a half inch back space on that 20 by 10. so i my issues were kind of compounded by the height of the truck but um, if you're in that four, six, five, seven range, you're still going to have these issues. If you are, I even was reading on some forums the other night and guys with two, four drops were having issues with, um, some of their wheel and tire set up without having the proper back spacing. So I know that, uh, you've heard from Travis in this video, you've heard from Patrick about what they prefer. I think what I would say is if I was going to do this again and I was going to go buy those Rushforth night trains directly from Rushforth and I was going to put this React QA1 coilover setup on my OBS, I would get a 20 by 10 with a six inch backspace and a 295 40. And I'd probably still have to do some cutting. I definitely have to do some rolling, but I think that would be what I would go with where I wouldn't have to cut as much, even though I still feel good about the rigidity and structure of my bedside. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing me struggle through this, but I think I got it worked out and uh, there's a lot more to come on this OBS. So y'all hang tight, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this OBS and about all the mess we got into trying to sort it out. And uh, yeah, smash that thumbs up. We'll catch up with you next time right here on United by Trucks.